I took all of these pictures in just 24 hours. So a couple of rules that I've set myself for the day. Um, I've just got 24 hours to get as many photographs as I can in the town of Banff, really rather than the full national park. Um, everywhere I visit is going to be accessible via public transport, um, pedal power or on foot. Um, for full disclaimer, I will be using a car to get between some of these locations. However, if you are staying in Banff in a hotel and you don't have a car, you will be able to make it to every single one of these places in this video today. So stay tuned to see where I took all those pictures. Location number one had to be Vermilion Lakes. Um, if you're into photography, you've probably seen this location before. It's about a 20 minute walk from the main Banff Avenue in town. Um, and this is the first lake. The first lake just had really nice reflections today and was a bit stiller. So I've decided to stop here to get my first few shots of today. Unfortunately, there's no real like clouds in the sky today, so I don't think I'm going to get much of a sunrise. Um, but I mean, the reflections are cool. Vermilion Lakes is always a good spot. Um, the mosquitoes are relentless already, and it's only five o'clock in the morning. Um, but I've got a really cool shot just down by the, the jetty there, just a bit of a leading line through the jetty. Um, and then I might come and try and get a couple different ones of a little bit of a different foreground, just to make the most of being here. So location number two had to be Banff Avenue. Uh, the cool thing about this street now is they pedestrianised the whole avenue. Um, so it means well, you can easily walk around, there's no traffic. And there's also loads of cool flowers been planted down the middle. So it offers up some really good foregrounds, making it a bit more interesting than it used to be. So there's multiple different shots to be had from kind of start to end here now. Um, I'm going to start up at the north end of Banff Avenue um, just to get some shots of some flowers in the foreground and then I'm going to show you as you go further back down the avenue you can shoot with a longer lens and you get some really cool compression so I think that's what I'll do next. I'll grab these shots and head down the end uh, and then show you exactly what I mean. <laughs> just doing some really sketchy like half assed focus stacking here. Um, so focusing on the flowers first and then changing focus to focus on a Cascade Mountain in the background. Um, hopefully that will come together all right. Um, to be honest, I just don't have two tripods. So I think I've kind of got a cool shot there. Um, it's kind of a bit stressful this because I'm not able to wait for like the nicest light. Like normally I'd set up in one location and kind of that would be me for, for the sunrise. Um, but just because I'm trying to get as many shots done as possible, I'm kind of like, yeah, that's probably as good as it's going to get. Like move on, go to the next one. Um, but now I'm going to run to the other end of Banff Avenue, take some shots of a longer lens and then go all the way down to the Parks Canada building. Because I know there's some good compositions to be had down there as well. I think Banff Avenue is a really good example of like focal compression or perspective compression. So if you're closer up using a wider angle, the mountain looks a lot smaller. However, if you come further back and start using a longer lens, you get that compression and just add kind of a really grand scale to cascade and make it look much larger against the town. I'll give you kind of an example on this camera. So for example, this is 16 mil, 35 mil, it's already looking bigger. And then on the back of the camera here, I've got 70 mil. And you can see there like how big Cascade's gonna look in that picture. It's, uh, it's about 20 past seven now. Um, and there's so many people out on Banff Avenue already, which is kind of cool. Like there's people cycling, running, like walking, all up and down. This pedestrianized zone's really cool now. Um, I grabbed this at 70 mil, this shot, but I'm also gonna grab it as a bit of a handheld panorama because I think that would just give me a few more options later on to kind of crop and reframe it a little bit if I'm not quite bang on center.
So you can see there, Mount Rundle was just catching the light. Um, that peak you can see almost anywhere from town. So if you've got a longer lens, um, it's a really cool shot to be had, especially if there's clouds peeling off the top. Um, I grabbed a couple of shots just then, and I'll also show you some that I've taken in the past, just when the light's catching it really nicely. But always be on the lookout for the light catching that peak when you're out here. So I'm at Cascade Gardens, I believe it's called, um, just at the end of Banff Avenue. Um, and you can see the Parks Administration building just behind me here. Um, this building was built to line up with Banff Avenue and with Cascade Mountain. Um, so there are some really good composition options here as well. Um, you can just see behind me here, you've got Cascade Mountain there as well as this garden in the front here with, with a nice little pond and a few like water features. So there's definitely some options here. You do kind of notice that that pond isn't quite lined up with Cascade and the road. So when you're trying to get that composition, you can kind of see the lack of symmetry there. Um, but it's still worth while coming in for a visit. It's a beautiful walk around and there's a few options. So I'm going to try and get a shot here. So I think I'm going to call Cascade Gardens and the parks building behind me like uh, location number four, I suppose. Um, but what people don't realise about this spot, and this is a good like secret location, if you come behind the Parks Canada building, you can see it behind me and you can see Cascade behind that. If you get just the right angle and you shoot with like a 50 or a 70 mil lens, you can get the building and the mountain to line up pretty much bang on. Um, so it makes for a really cool little shot if you are out here getting some photographs in the morning. This is with 70 mil. You can kind of see here, maybe even a little bit tighter, but you can really get that kind of lining up pretty nice. Um, especially if you're shooting in kind of a portrait orientation, which I think I probably will. I think it's about 8.30 now, and you can probably tell from those last couple of shots that the light's getting pretty harsh. You can see it there just hitting my face as I walk through the woods. Um, and I was hoping, in all honesty, there'd be a bit more cloud today. Um, that's kind of what I was hoping for. So during the day, I'd have a bit of kind of shade to um, shoot under, and it kind of makes, the flatter light normally makes it a little bit easier. And I've got a few spots in mind, but the forecast still says it's gonna cloud up a bit later on. So I think what I'm gonna do is probably go in and find some breakfast, have a bit of a chill, um, regroup and then head back out in an hour or two for a few more locations. Muffin, apple and a kombucha. Probably not the most interesting breakfast but I think this and then home for a nap for a couple of hours and then back to it. Had a bit of a rest, come back out about 3 p.m. You can see now there are actually plenty of clouds up in the sky. Um, so that should mean we can play with some long exposures and some neutral density filters, um, just to try and make it a bit more interesting in this kind of harsher light at the moment. Um, I'm just down by the Bow River actually. Um, and I've got a composition in mind where I know there's some like shallow water that will get me a reflection or some fast moving water past rocks and grass. Um, I just went down to the river really quickly to have a look and got destroyed by about 10,000 mosquitoes. So I think what I'm gonna do is set my camera up here, like away from the river, and then walk on down and I kind of get the shot and try and get in and out as quickly as I can. Just uh, made my way down to the edge of the river here. Um, it's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. Initially, when I walked here, I got bitten by about 10 or 20 mosquitoes like straight away. Um, but it seems to be okay right now. But you can kind of see behind me here, like all these like braided rivers that go in and out of the grass. Um, that makes for some cool leading lines, um, some good water movement, or even some reflections if the river's a little bit lower and you can get some nice puddles. Um, so it's worth checking out. Um, you can see here, like this is the main pedestrian 
with the, with the main bridge in town really, um, which everyone drives over. So if you just cut next to the river from there, it's a pretty easy spot to find as well. And it's great at sunrise and sunset when you can get those really cool clouds peeling off of uh, Mount Rundle. But we'll see what we can get uh, done now because I've got some other plans for later on, I think. Yeah, I think that last shot isn't really going to be any good. Average at best. Um, just in the harsh sunlight, it's difficult to find locations where to shoot. It's been quite a good experiment for me because I don't normally shoot at this time of day. Um, but I've got another place. I'm on the way to Cascade Falls and I think this location will still be pretty cool. I think we're now on location number six for the day. Um, this is a great little hidden spot to be fair. If you come out to Cascade Ponds, which you can get to via bus or by bike, cross the road and then go up a small little hike, you can get to Cascade Falls. And here you've got these waterfalls that kind of run down the mountain and can work really well as a leading line to lead your eye into Mount Rundle. Um, it's a great kind of hidden, lesser known spot and also really good to photograph during the day here because it's not too affected by harsh light. What I ended up doing was stacking a neutral density filter as well as a polarizer on the front of my lens so that I could get as long exposure as possible. Um, I forgot my remote today, so all I could do was 30 seconds. But what I've done is I've taken five or six of those images at 30 second exposures and I'll stack those together um, to give the impression of a longer exposure for the cloud so I get those nice streaks as well as the water movement in the foreground. Location number seven is Surprise Corner, uh, where you get a view of the Fairmont Hotel and also the Bow River and the Bow Falls, which you can hear behind me. Um, I'm losing my inspiration a bit, I think, just because I'm so tired. Um, so I've got a couple of pictures, none that I'm like super happy with. So I might actually come back here later on when the lights are on in the hotel, because I think there's some opportunity there to get some really cool shots. But the light's about to get really nice, so I'm going to head to Two Jack Lake and Lake Minnewanka. Got a bit of a Canadian traffic jam on the way to Minnewanka. Um, the evening's always pretty good for wildlife around here anyway, but take a look. Lake Minnewanka, location number eight. Uh, easy to get to on the bus. Um, you can rent an e-bike or a bike in town and cycle out here, um, but great options. You've got jetties, you've got boats, you've got kind of rocky foregrounds. So some great options for photography here. Oh, <laughs> I think I just want to apologize in advance because I think the quality of the images that I'm getting at the moment is by no means my best work. Um, I've been up since four, so I think I'm just so tired that I'm just struggling to find the compositions that I would like, but hopefully at least it's giving you a bit of an insight of what is possible in one day in Bath. <sighs> Location nine, I think, to Jack Lake. This is normally a really awesome spot, but unfortunately today, like the light's not great. Um, the wind's up, so you're not getting much of a reflection on the lake either, but I'm going to try my best to take a couple of shots and I think what I might do is actually put up a couple that I've taken previously in other years where the conditions have been better just to show you what is possible. I think I'm giving up on two jack but I just had a check on photo pills and I think the Milky Way might actually line up tonight. So um, 
I've still got like six or seven hours left of my 24 hours. So I'm gonna go into town, shoot the Fairmont in a couple of different locations, um, see what the time is, probably pop back here. And then I think maybe even if the stars are good, go back to Vermilion Lakes, but we'll see what happens. Surprise! <laughs> We're at, uh, back at Surprise Corner. Um, you can see the Fairmont lights are on just behind me here as well now. So hoping we can get a couple of shots. I think it's coming up half past 10 or 11. Um, but hopefully we can get a couple more and you can see these just mozzies just flying all around me. This is not a good time. Oh, <laughs> I had to bail on that. I got one shot done, I think. And then there were just so many mosquitoes, I just had to leave. Um, I thought they went to sleep, like mosquitoes not go to sleep. They just seem to be there all the time, no matter what the weather, no matter what time of day. Like it's been so bad this summer. I just, I just don't get it. I'm gonna try a couple more locations. Um, if there's mosquitoes, I'm probably gonna go home. <laughs> so, um, I suppose location number 10, coming on about 11 p.m. Um, I'm just kind of framing up a photo of the Fairmont in the hope that I can get multiple exposures of the cars coming around the roundabout and driving up and down to get some kind of nice light streaks. Um, I'm just framing it up a little bit like this. So that's kind of around the composition that I'm going for, probably a little bit wider. Um, unfortunately, this guy's left this big ugly black van there that's kind of going into the road, so I'll probably have to Photoshop that out. Um, not sure if you can see as well, there is actually a deer or an elk just eating flowers right in the middle of the roundabout. I think that will have come out okay. Um, I might layer up a couple of them to kind of add streaks and add in more light trails. Um, I think I'm gonna to go to, to Jack Lake just to see if the Milky Way is visible at about 12.30 and then that will be the last location for the day. Um, off to bed after that for sure. I did head back to Two Jack Lake last night in the end. I finished up about half past one, two o'clock. Um, the stars were out, the Milky Way was reflecting in the lake, um, and I got some pretty awesome shots. So that was it, 24 hours photographing Banff, and what a way to finish up with that Milky Way shot. Um, if you've made it this far, I thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you found it useful and found out about some spots you've maybe not heard of before. Um, I'm hoping to do plenty of these again, so I want to do winter versions, I want to do one for Lake Louise and one for Canmore. So if you are interested in seeing some awesome photography spots around the Bow Valley and the Canadian Rockies, um, please subscribe to the channel and like the video.